Hey, what's going on my ASVAB party people? Anderson, your ASVAB coach here. And today in this video, we're gonna talk about, yo, how do we work backwards when it comes to simple interest? Like how, how do we work backwards with formulas? And so in this video, we're gonna be talking about not just, you know, simple interest, but I'm gonna show you how to apply techniques that you can use for any formula. Because let me tell you right now, on the ASVAB arithmetic reasoning section especially, it is not just about knowing your formulas and where to plug in. Like, sometimes you gotta work backwards. Sometimes they're gonna give you the end result and you may not realize it if you're not being careful about reading the information. So that's what we're gonna teach you today in this video. I hope you enjoy. And before we begin, remember, you can get all of these great ASVAB resources that I have over on the Duran Learning website. So check the description of this video or go to www.duranlearning.com to get the help that you need. We have a free Facebook group, a free practice pack, free group tutoring happening once a week, and then other great resources for those who are really trying to go in there, raise their score the right way, get the score they want, and the military job they deserve. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So we're looking at this question, and look, first things first, every single time, you have to look at the question first. You can't read the entire you know, problem statement. You can't do that. You can't do that. The reason is, we get a little overwhelmed when we start, you know, getting information that we don't know the purpose of. Like, it, it doesn't make sense to us. Like, think about, let's say, you know, even your best friend. Your best friend could come up to you random as heck on a, on a random day and just start spitting off information. Sometimes you might pause that friend and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. what are we talking about? What's going on? Right? You know, if they just start mouthing off a bunch of information. We tend to check out a lot sooner than we want to. And so we might want to pause our friend. And be like, hey, 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 what are we talking about? What are we, what's going on? Right? Before you get all that information. That's the same thing here. So we're going to go straight to the question statement right here. How much money was in the account when you opened it? That's the first thing you want to do with every single question, guys. Every single one. Because at the end of the day, what that's going to give you is confidence that you know what you're supposed to solve for. Maybe you don't know how to get there yet. That's okay. But the first thing is, hey, I'm confident that I know at least what I'm going for. How we're gonna get there, we'll figure that out. So how much money was in the account when you opened it? All right, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, you know, underline some key things here. How much money in the account when you opened it? When you opened it. So what we're looking for here is the opening amount or initial amount. Whoops, right there, Jesus. <laughs> opening amount right there. And so here's the thing. When we read the information, we'll quickly see that this is a problem that's about interest, simple interest. Because when you read through the information, seven years after opening your retirement account, you earned this much money in yearly simple interest. Right there, that gives it away. Simple interest. So when you're talking about the opening amount, the initial amount, the starting amount, that is called your principal. And so if you look you know, if you direct your eyes right down here, you'll see that again, we're talking about interest. And when you're looking at your formula, if you know your formula, which you have to know, you know that interest earned is equal to your principal multiplied by your rate, multiplied by your time, divided by 100. The rate right here is a percent, and I'm gonna highlight everything accordingly to show you what it all means. But with that said, here we go. We're looking for your opening amount, which is also called, again, your principal amount all right your principal amount so that is the red right there that is what we're looking for and i'm going to go ahead and write equals cash blank don't know what it is yet but watch this watch the beauty of this i'm going to collect my information i'm going to set up my equation and i'm going to solve it it's going to be that simple but you just have to know what belongs where so in a blue highlight here seven years after opening your retirement account seven years that is time that is the term of your account and so with that boom let's write that down so time seven years again that's our time next we have to look at that hundred and seventeen dollars and sixty cents let's go ahead and grab green here hundred and seventeen dollars and sixty cents in what yearly simple interest that's what the account earned so that account earned $117.60. That is right here, the interest earned. That is I. That is the resulting uh, earnings that you have here. And so again, $117.60 earned. 
That's the interest that you earned. That's the interest that you earned. Now, let's go ahead and see if there's any other information here. Yeah, we definitely have it here. We definitely have that. We see here over here in purple, interest rate was 8%. 8%. So we're going to go ahead and write that down as well. 8% interest. And remind ourselves, what kind of interest? The problem has to tell you what type of interest it is. It is not a valid problem if they don't tell you if it's a one-time interest fee or if it's simple interest or compounded interest. They have to tell you. And great, right here, simple interest gives it away for us. We're feeling good. And so, boom, that is simple interest. All right, and that's going to be right over here. That's your rate. That's the R. And again, we are looking for P here. We're looking for that principal amount. We're looking for that. So I hope you can see that with the formula, if you know your formula and you know what each component is, you can then take those values that you got and plug them in in the right place and then solve. So let me go ahead and express that now to you. So in green here, we have interest earned. And so that's going to be the $117.60. Next, what are we going to have? Well, it's going to be equals, again, PRT over 100, principal, rate, and time over 100. So the principal, that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to keep that as P. Next, I'm going to multiply that by the rate, which was given to us in purple at 8%. And you're going to keep it as a percent. The reason you're going to keep that as a percent, let me just make this very clear here. When you are multiplying by a percent, you have to convert it first to a decimal. And remember, percents are always out of what original number? 100%. So when you're dealing with percents here, that's 100%. And so to convert, you have to divide by 100 right there. You see that we have a division of 100 right here? So that's why you can keep it as just a percent when you multiply. Because it's being divided by 100 anyway, it's going to be converted anyway. And I'm going to show you why this is such an important thing for us to use in a moment. Next. Um, we're going to go ahead and include the time here. So the term here uh, for this account being open is seven years. All right. And that's it right there. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and just straight up solve for P. So let me remind you, when you're solving equations, the art of solving equations is working backwards. You have to perform the opposite operations to get that variable by itself. So let me just really show you what that looks like before I dive in and get crazy. So you have to find P, right? Yeah. And so what's in the way? You see that's being multiplied by eight, multiplied by seven, and it's being all divided by 100. So we got to get rid of all three of those operations happening. And I'm going to do it one thing at a time. Watch this. First things first, I see that I have, you know, times eight then times seven, and all of it's being divided by 100. Notice how I didn't multiply the eight and seven together yet. You don't have to. Remember on the ASVAB, Keeping things simpler is sometimes a lot better because that's going to be 56. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to divide by a 56. I don't like dividing by 56 because I don't know the multiples of 56 off the top of my head. You see what I'm saying here? You want to keep it simple, especially when you're not using a calculator. So first things first, I'm going to do the opposite of dividing by 100 right there. I'm going to get rid of that thing. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to multiply by 100 on both sides. Allow me to move this over. That way I can multiply by 100 over here. And there we go. That's our start here. Boom, the 100 cancels out. And then on the left side, we can multiply by 100, which is simply going to be moving the decimal place over two times. Because remember, dividing by 100, move to the left two times to turn to a decimal, right? Multiplying by 100, the other way around. Just move it to the right two times, and you're good. And so we have $117.60 that turns into 11760 from there, let's just rewrite everything that we have. I'm going to keep the P in red, but change the color of everything else. Just regular black here, 8 times 7. So here's the reason, again, why I did that earlier, why I didn't combine the 8 and the 7. I'm just going to go ahead and understand that I'm not using a calculator here. So I'm going to first divide by the 8. You can divide by the 7 first if you want to. Either way is fine. You can divide by the 56 if you want to. Again, it's up to you. But just know that we're trying to keep things simple. So the 8s go ahead and cancel out. Bye-bye. And I'm going to try to do the 8 into 11,760 in my head real quick or on paper. Either way, it works out. So I'm going to do it on paper just to show you guys how to do it. Um, so here we go. 11760. 8 goes into 11 once. Minus 
8 gives us 3, 7, that's going to be 4, minus 32 is 5, uh, bring the 6 down, 8 into 56 is 7, 147, um, and then you bring that 0 that's right there, 1,470. And that's going to be equal to, again, 7 times P. I just moved the 7 in front. That's completely okay. That's completely okay. Rewind that if you want to see that again. But one way that you could do that with mental math, guys, is by going ahead and saying, hey, look, 8 goes into 11 once. So with a 3 left over, 37, that's going to be 4. So 1, 4, 5, and 6 left over, 1, 4, and then that's going to be 7. So 1, 4, 7, 0. If you didn't quite understand that, don't worry. That was just a mental math technique. My students that are uh, really practicing their mental math techniques, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've seen that in the group tutoring past classes, so I'm glad that you guys are getting it. And for those of you that aren't, I really encourage you to join that group tutoring pass again so you can get the mental math practice that you need and practice for every single topic. So here we go. Lastly, just divide by that seven and we're done. Bye-bye, bye-bye. I'm gonna take this highlighter here. Sevens are gone. And so now we're doing 100, or excuse me, 1,470 divided by seven. Here we can do that with mental math, absolutely. Because seven goes into 14 twice, seven goes into 70 10 times. So 210. And that's gonna be the answer there for P. So P, what was that again? Remember, that was your principal amount. And so therefore, boom, the answer is C. $210 is what was in the account when you started. And so with that said, my ass about party people, I hope you guys enjoyed this question. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, remember to stay consistent, keep practicing. Even five minutes a day on a busy day counts. Because remember, as long as you are inching your way forward, you will never go back. And if you're always going forward, you'll eventually reach your goal. And so again, guys, much love, much love. If you have any questions on the ASVAB or need help or want to raise your score the right way, hit me up. I'm your guy. With that said, keep kicking butt, guys. I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.